Time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to. Faithful and true 
spoke for me. Mercy spoke for me. Mercy spoke for me. It was on Golgotha's tree. His death brought liberty. His death brought liberty. Oh, his death brought liberty. Good morning. Welcome to Valley Ranch Baptist Church. We're so glad that you've joined us for worship. Let's stand together. Let's sing to the Lion of Judah, the King of Kings.
Amen. You guys can have a seat. Well, good morning. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors at VRBC, and I'm just so grateful uh, that we are together this morning in God's presence to worship Him, to give thanks to God for all the good things He's done, and to respond to Him in worship. Uh, you know, when we come to a service like this, it's easy to think that we come as spectators or observers, but I want to remind us that we are here this morning as participants, participating together in the worship of God. And I want to talk about three ways we're going to do that over these next few moments. In this section of the service, we're going to celebrate, give, and pray. Celebrate, give, and pray. Things that we can all do together. First of all, I want to celebrate the good things that God's doing among us. You know, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, one of the things we pray is, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And one of the really cool things about following Jesus is we don't just, we don't just pray that prayer. God gives us the opportunity to partner with Jesus in making it a reality in our community. And I want us to watch this video uh, as we celebrate some of the ways that's happening through our HERE initiative. Hey church family, I'm here today outside of Tom Landry Elementary and also at River Chase Elementary. This week we had many volunteers coming to both schools and it's been a great way to serve them and to show that we are here for them. Thanks to your generosity, we're going to deliver the snacks for the children here. We're also going to be able to uh, provide a gift for the teachers. Thank you. Oh, come on. Oh, my goodness. Today, VRBC wants to bless every classroom teacher with a $50 Amazon gift card to buy supplies for their classroom. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so this is how about some battery. Yeah. Wow! Thank y'all so much. That's amazing. I have about 50 or 60 students daily coming to my room to ask me for breakfast bars and snacks. Um, and it's a hassle having to say no to them. It breaks my heart. But unfortunately, I can't provide it for about 500 students in total. So thankfully, you know, um, we have you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I love to see the, the blessing on the faces of the people that we're having the opportunity to serve. And just want to say thank you to uh, our congregation for being a part of this here initiative. We're celebrating, like I said, that over 250 people so far have either served as part of our here initiative or have signed up to serve. And so that's something to celebrate. But we're not just celebrating, we're also giving. And I want to invite you to give of your time to be a part of this project. I'm going to tell you about three specific ways you can do that. Uh, this week. Uh, first of all, today we're having a blood drive. You may have seen the Carter Blood Care uh, bus on the way in. There are still spots. Uh, if you want to head out to that bus anytime this morning, they can get you signed up uh, to be a part of that. Uh, secondly, on Saturday, we're going to be distributing over 700 boxes of food to families at the Golden Triangle community in West Capel. And we have room for lots of people to come and deliver those food and to share the love of Christ in a tangible and practical way. And we'd love for you to be a part of that. You can get more information on our website. And then finally, a week from today, on Sunday, we'll have a diaper and formula drive benefiting Viola's House, one of our mission partners. And so you can bring any uh, brand or size of diapers and any formula to the church on Sunday morning, and we will get those uh, to moms who are in desperate need in our community. And so I want to encourage you to give in that way. Another way that you can give is through giving of your resources financially. If you're here in person today, you can use the giving stations at each entrance or if you want to give online, uh, the easiest way to do that is to hold up your phone on your camera to the QR code in front of you and just click the Give button, and we'd love to invite you to do that. That QR code is also where you can find our connection card, and we'd love to invite everybody, whether it's your first time or your thousandth time, to fill out a connection card for us just to let us know of your visit with us. 
So we're celebrating, we're giving, and we're praying together. That's one of the main things we do when we gather as the body of Christ is to pray together. We pray individually all week, but we pray corporately when we come together. And I want to highlight one thing we're going to be praying for together this morning, and that is Claudia Adame, one of our VRBC-supported missionaries. Claudia is sitting right here. Wave at everybody, Claudia. Got the <laughs> Miss America wave. Good. Uh, we have the privilege of supporting uh, 10 different missionaries around the world, and Claudia is one that we've been able to partner with for so many years, and Claudia is a member, longtime member of VRBC. On your way in, you received a card with Claudia's picture and some information about her ministry and some ways that you can pray for her. We'd love to invite you to put this on your fridge or somewhere at home where you'll see it this month and pray for her consistently. And will you now join me uh, as we pray together? Heavenly Father, we bow before you in worship this morning. We're so grateful to you for your goodness, for your sovereignty. We have such peace knowing that you're on the throne. We thank you for your love for us, expressed so beautifully in the death and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for the new life that you've given us. And we do pray, as we've been talking about, your kingdom come, your will be done. We want to see your kingdom coming in our lives and all around the world because we believe that your kingdom is truly the best way to live. And so we want to pray for ourselves that you would transform us from the inside out through the power of your spirit. And we want to pray that your kingdom would come and your will would be done in our community, especially through this here initiative that we're in the middle of right now. God, we don't want it just to be uh, where we drop off uh, uh, a, a diapers or a snack or we just show up at a school and then it just has no impact. God, we want this to be a part of your kingdom coming in this place and we pray that would be the case. God, we lift up um, our, our friend and our sister Claudia. Thank you so much for her ministry um, here and around the world and we pray that through her that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God, we pray um, also for the places around the world that are experiencing war and conflict. Um, God, we, our hearts are, are broken for the tragedies happening in the Middle East right now. And God, we pray that you would work um, in Israel and Gaza to bring a miraculous change to the situation and bring peace and healing um, through the name of Jesus. And we pray together that your kingdom would come and your will would be done in our hearts and around the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, God's word tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I don't know about you, but I'm really grateful that in the midst of good days and bad days, that, that we serve a God who doesn't have good days and bad days, that we, we serve a God who is unchanging, a God who is faithful, and he's the same amount of faithful as he was the day that he created the heavens and the earth. He's still just as faithful. Uh, this next song that we're going to sing, I love this verse. It says, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. So grateful that we worship a God who's solid and steadfast. Let's stand together as we continue to worship. So 
church. You can be seated. of faith, Abraham said yes to God's call to travel to a place that was unknown to him, but that would become his home. When he left, he didn't know where he was going, but by an act of faith, he lived in the country promised to him. But he lived as a stranger, camping in tents. Isaac and Jacob, they did the same thing, living under the same promise. Abraham did that by keeping his eye on an unseen city with real and eternal foundations. A city that was designed and built by God. By faith, bearing Sarah was able to become pregnant as old woman that she was because she believed that the one who made the promise would do as he said. That's how it all happened by one man, that's shiver loins. We have now people that are numbering to the millions. All of those people of faith, they died, not yet having a hand what was promised. But still, they believed. They were believing. How did they do that? They saw it way off in the distance, waved their greeting, and just accepted the fact that they were transients in this world. People that live like this, they make it plain, that plain, that they are looking for their true home. If they were homesick of their old country, they could have gone back any time that they wanted, but they were far ahead looking to a far country better than this one, heaven country. You know, we can see that's why God is so proud of them and has prepared a city that is waiting for them. Good morning, church family. This is our scripture for today. It comes from Hebrews 11. And uh, I'm so glad to be here with you. Uh, in person, and with you guys online, behind the cameras there. And today we're wrapping up this road trip series where we've been exploring Abraham's journey and how he put faith into practice. We've seen that Abraham left not knowing what the destination was, how he trusted in God's promises, and that we should have patience because God's time is perfect. And that we should celebrate God's surprising grace in Jesus. And also that God is enough, no matter the situation we are in. That's all great, but it also raises a question. What else should be learned? I mean, that was my struggle when I was told that was, I would be bringing a message closing the series. You know... Whoever planned the series had this great idea of moving from Genesis, where we've been spending a month on, to Hebrews. Do you think they're trying to trick me? <laughs> well, jokes apart, I think we still have lots to learn from Abraham. And, you know, we've spent five weeks uh, in this series looking at the detail of this wonderful story. But the author of the book of Hebrews, he takes the microscope away and zoom it out and try to look the whole story as a big picture. As he does it, he's trying to help us uh, to uh, see this story as a whole and help us to do a proper interpretation so we can apply it today. So why are we going to do that? Well, we'll look ahead to the promises that were made to Abraham 
and consequently to all of us. And I would like to challenge you on the aspects of today's life, but also encourage you on the promises that were made. So let me see what I have here in my notes. Come with me. So chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews is a well-known chapter that states what we call the hall of faith. And the chapter calls the believers to faithful endurance using several examples of people in the Old Testament that were faithful during their journey. The author, he goes on and on and on with this example list to the point that he gets to Abraham. And that's exactly where we take our journey from today. You know how the story begins, right? So Abraham is being called to move. God said, hey, Abraham, take all of your stuff, your family, you know, everything, and go to this place, and it will be amazing, and I'll provide everything that you need. And then Abraham asks, excuse me, sir, can I just clarify something? You know, I love to travel because I don't have kids. And, you know, traveling with kids, I love you guys. Love you, love my girls. But traveling with kids is like uh, those very dangerous professions when you leave home, but you're not sure if you're coming back. <laughs> but Abraham was like, you know, I love to travel and everything, and, but take everyone, explore, get to know places. But where exactly? Don't worry. I'll show you, God said. Just trust me. What happens next is the explanation of why God honored Abraham. But what, what exactly is that? So let's look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. So from this verse and on, we can say that for Abraham, faith meant action. We see uh, at the very beginning that by faith, and this is really important, okay? By faith, he did something. He did something not because it was school, not because he, was, he didn't have a choice, not because uh, he wanted to, because probably he didn't want to. You know, think about that. Abraham had everything he needed right there. He had wealth. He had a family. You know, a wife, father, brothers, and nephews and nieces. And he and his family knew that place. They were there for probably decades. And there was no reason to move. Of course, at this point, he didn't have an heir, a son. But, you know, he was 80 years old. I think at that point, he was in peace with that, right? And at that time, there were ways to get around that, as we see later in the story. But still, he did it by faith. He did it because he trusted that what God was calling him to do would be the best for him. It's like when your mom says, I think you should do like this way here, and you don't like, and you complain. But deep down here, you know she wants the best for you. Maybe you don't like it, but you know your mom wants the best for you. And, you know, like me, some of you might be thinking about what Abraham thought and felt and when he was called to move, you know, uh, to be like a stranger in a foreign country. Have those moments when you think, what am I doing here? You know, the food is different. The habits are different. I don't have any friends on this land here. It's all different. I wonder how he felt about that. But still, by faith, he obeyed and he went. Faith in this context means action. God wanted him to move forward, to pursue something, to leave something that seemed to be big like this, to pursue something that was big like the universe. And that was including the stars. Now, growing up, I had a friend that I went to school with, and his nickname was Roach. Yes, like cockroach, that thing. And don't ask me why, never learned, but just for, for the sake of your night of sleep, 
His real name was Alexander, a.k.a. Roach. Okay, so I met Roach for the first time in the school bus, and both of our fathers were police officers, and we were in military school together. And I was in fourth grade, and Roach was in middle school. And I always felt like Roach was like 10 years older than me. He was, in fact, five or six years older. He was known as some sort of troublemaker. And at that time, when I, where I come from, if you, by the end of the year, you fail, you don't get your grades, you would repeat which means do the same grade again next year, okay? Roach was a specialist in repeating. <laughs> when I met him, he was what we used to call a repeater. So he would do a grade, repeat it, move to the next, repeat it, move to the next, repeat it. It was just insane. The interesting fact is that I was in fourth grade, he was in middle school, and in a period of four years, I was able to reach to Roach and be on the same grade as him. Can you believe it? What was intriguing to me is that Roach was kind of popular, and he was really good at sports, and somebody said, of course, he was older, but he was really good in sports, any sports, but it looks like he really liked to be in that school. I remember when we were in high school together, and of course he turned 18 years old, way ahead of us, and he would leave school and then work at McDonald's and tell us the stories about the free burgers and perks he would get as an employee. And as a freshman, I was, wow, that's the life I want for me. <laughs> Fast forward, we ended up graduating high school together. I went to law school and uh, lost contact with Roach. But then years later, I learned that Roach became a PE teacher. Yeah, but guess where was his first job at? Same school. <laughs> Same school, it seems that he was stuck. You know, and maybe, maybe he loved that place that much, and, but that's not my point. My point is that he seemed to be stuck. He, it seems that he couldn't find a way to move forward. You know, man, there's a whole world out there, and you are here. You know, go, explore, find a different pasture where the grass is greener, the water is fresher. But Roach was stuck. You know, the faith that God requires from us, friends, requires action. God doesn't want us thinking that... Uh, Faith, uh, the, the, the faith is small. The gift that he gives to us makes us uh, burn and makes us wanting to conquer the world. After Jesus ascended, the disciples were walking in circles in Jerusalem. They were struggling with small things, trying to complicate Jesus' teachings. In spite of a very clear command that said, Go and make disciples of all nations. Is that clear enough? And be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. They were stuck in Jerusalem. God had to call the Apostle Paul in order to keep things moving. Faith is action, my friends. Once you believe, it's not God's desire that you feel so blessed that you keep it just for you. He's calling you and I to move, to be in action. The same chapter on Hebrews brings some, some examples of this uh, type of faith. So let's look at these verbs. So Abel brought the best offering. Noah built the ark. Moses left Egypt not fearing the king's anger. And Rahab welcomed the spies. And later, we see the same thing, the same type of action through our Lord and Savior. You know, Jesus, he carried the cross and gave his life for us. Today, by faith, friends, I want to challenge you to be in action. I'm challenging you to trust and move and then you find a place to serve. You will teach, you will sing, you'll be a mentor, you mow a yard, you rock babies. I don't care, whatever. What I care is about seeing every, everyone here moving, pursuing the vision that God has given us. 
impacting our community, being different. That's what our HERE initiative is about. It's about action. Jesus was always moving, always in action, not always in the same place. And we want to be like him. When somebody says that they think that the believers don't behave like Jesus, I want them confused. You know, when uh, people say that believers are looking like this or looking like that, I want them uh, confused because when they see people from VRBC, they will not understand. They will get confused because we are different and we are reflecting Jesus as we move around this community. Amen? Let's keep moving, friends. Let's keep moving. Now, we'll keep move, moving because that's what God is expecting from us. But let me assure you, the journey will not always be smooth. So if faith for Abraham meant action, it also meant endurance. And why do I say endurance? I'm saying that because on one hand, we have all the amazing promises that God has made for Abraham and for all of us. But on the other hand, Abraham didn't get to see all the promises that were made becoming a reality, right? It doesn't mean that he didn't have joy while he was waiting. It doesn't mean that he didn't think that God would pull it off. On the contrary. So let's see what this verse is about Abraham's experience in his walk with God say. By faith, he made his home in the promised land. He was already there like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. All of these people were still living by faith when they died. You see, neither Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, they saw their descendants becoming as numerous as the stars on the sky and countless as the sand on the seashore. But they lived their lives knowing that this life is not the whole show. There are just a few episodes. There are way more episodes to come. Abraham, even when we got, he got to the promised land that God has sent him to, he continued to live in tents. He didn't build like the ultimate dwelling place for himself because he knew his ultimate victory was not there. He knew that despite the troubles, the droughts, the illness that would kill his cattle, the fear of being attacked by the enemy, nothing of it, nothing would take away from him the ultimate victory. In this world, you have trouble. That's what Jesus said, right? Friends, the world that God created has become corrupt, corrupted. It's not the same anymore. And we will have trouble. That's a fact. But the promise is that the final victory is ours. Think about this. Christianity is the religion of the defeated, the weakened, the poor. The base of Christianity is a God that is murdered at a cross. He's not a, 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 a military leader that conquered and won the enemies. It's the story of a God that makes himself vulnerable made himself man and died. We adore a God that has scars. Jesus suffered. Remember the Psalms of David? When you read the whole thing, a lot of things you see there are kind of depressing. And a lot of times David feels miserable. And he wants to die. But his hope is in God. It's not on the victory that he and his army can conquer, can accomplish. It's not on the territory that they can conquer, but on God. That is the only one that can deliver him and fulfill his promises. We stand on a society that cares for success, for uh, wealth, for accomplishments, and that's all fine. But God never said that our lives would be built on it. On the contrary, he advised that things in this world would, you know, I wanted to find a better word. I have one in my mind, but I won't say. Things in this world would be complicated. Now, 
This is not a guilt trip, I promise you. Far from that. What I'm saying is that if there is a struggle in your life, it doesn't mean that God has abandoned you. It doesn't mean that God doesn't care for you and your problems. It means that this is a temporary mess that we have to deal with. And even uh, with that, we have the assurance that your life doesn't come down to it. And your faith will keep you moving forward. And will make you realize that God is with you all the time and helping you to get through this. Look back at your life. How many times you thought that was the end? How many times you thought of that? And still, you made it. You are here. Don't lose faith. Don't get stuck. Keep moving. The destination is there. I know it's hard to see it now. It's a little foggy and it's dark. But I promise you, the cloud will pass. And you get to the destination. Just keep moving. Now, more than knowing that this was just part of the journey, Abraham knew that the best part of God's promises, the best part of his promises, was in the future chapter of his life. And because of that, his faith, his faith also could be translated as hope. So let's read these verses here. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. That's astonishing to me. Despite of the possibility of receiving amazing blessings in this life here, Abraham and others, they were focusing on the things that would from far surpass the goods of this world. Things that would make this world look pale, insignificant. One author says that faith in this context means to look to the promised future rather than at the unsatisfactory present. Money is great, but there is something better than that. That job looks awesome, but there is something better than that. Barbecue, hmm, I love barbecue. <laughs> but there is something better than that. Dallas Cowboys, not so good. It must be something better, right? It must be. Priscilla, my wife, that's debatable. He didn't like, she didn't like this joke, by the way. <laughs> now, I have a picture of what heaven looks like. Let's see. Do you see yourself in it? I know some of you are. But heaven is not like this, guys. It's way different, way different. The apostle John, you know, one of the disciples, he uh, walked with Jesus, and he knew Jesus. He was super close to Jesus. He wrote about this in the book of Revelation. And he describes the holy city having a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. He continues saying that the great street of the city was of gold as pure and transparent glass. He did not see a temple in, in the city. There was no temple like this. You know why? Because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is its lamp. Friends, we won't be like ghosts flying around. You know, we'll have the same body. But God promised that He would not only restore our bodies... But he would glorify it. Which means that this flesh won't get sick. You won't have to have a knee replacement. You know, I won't have my sciatica problems. John, your stomach will be able to process all kinds of food other than salad. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I will have a set of muscles just for myself. It's going to be so cool. Our bodies will be perfect. And remember what I said when I said that uh, this is, Christianity is a religion of a God that died. Jesus really died. But here's the good news about it. Jesus resurrected after three days. And you know what? 
God gave him a glorified body, which is exactly like the one we are going to have. Isn't it great? In heaven, we won't be slackers, you know? Do you know that we'll be worshiping like this all together? We're also going to be work because we're going to be serving God. But the work won't be a burden. A burden. We'll have joy while we do it. Because we'll, we'll feel fulfilled by the purpose we were created for. And it will, be, will bring us back to the oranges of everything. You know, when God created us, He created us with the purpose of doing goods, good works, and also adoring Him, as we see throughout the Scriptures. Now look at this other promise about the future. God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Everything. Guys, all of these things that you see around, the shootings, people mean, merciless, the wars, this is the old order. And he's promising he's going to make everything new. This is the meaning of the verse we have here when we talk about baptism. It's God doing everything, making everything new. He will transform everything. There will be a new heaven, a new earth. You were defeated by illness in this life. But here's the thing. God will make you whole again. You may face challenges in your relationships. But let me tell you. God himself will dwell with you. You might be crying. And you don't even remember when was the last day that you haven't cried. But let me tell you. There will be no more tears. Because God himself will will wipe your tears, and you won't die, and there, is, there will be no reason to be sad. Hallelujah. It will be a new heaven and a new earth, all brand new, but without all of those things that make this world look not so great. Abraham knew that. God promised him a son. God promised him to make of him a great nation. And that people would be blessed through him. Friends, these promises were small in comparison to what God had reserved for him and he has for us. BRBC, keep your faith. Keep moving. Endure because this is just temporary. Place your heart on the hope that Jesus went to prepare a place for us. So, if you want to throw away everything we've been talking this past 30 minutes, that's totally fine. But if you would keep one thing, keep this. The most beautiful thing that happened in this whole story we've been looking at is that God used Abraham to write down a story of redemption. And the news is that Abraham was not anything close to special. He was exactly like you and me. You know, he tried to use shortcuts. He lied. He was imperfect. Which means that God can use little Arthur. He can use you and you and you and you back there. If you're visiting today and you haven't placed your faith in Jesus, this, all this conversation might feel a little bit uh, nonsense, but I want to invite you to place your trust on a God that won't fail. You might be disappointed with what life has presented to you, but God's promises will overcome all of that. And you can start to experience all of it right now. Place your faith in a God through His Son, Jesus. That's my invitation for you today. Now, on the other hand, Maybe you placed your faith in Jesus a long time ago, you know, but your relationship with him may be dormant. 
I want to invite you to shake off the dust of your spiritual life. And start to act, to be in action. You know, all of those things you've been prioritizing, now it's time for a shift. Now it's time to place God in the first place and let Him guide you. Be back in action, friend. Even if you were hurt by a previous experience, God will not hurt you. He's calling you back to be in action. He's calling you back to Him. So let's keep moving, church. This has been a fantastic season for all of us. But we might see challenges ahead of us, right? But remember, this is just part of the journey. Remember, this is not the whole show. There are a lot of episodes to come. Our ultimate goal is not 1501 East Beltline Road, but the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. We must leave longing for our final destination. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you, God, for all the amazing promises that you have for us. Thank you for the great work, amazing work that you, you have made through Abraham. That give us the hope that you can use all of us, God. Fill all of us with your Holy Spirit so we can be in action. We can be like Jesus. We can move around this community here and show your grace and your light and your mercy to everyone that sees your people. We're so grateful, God. So grateful because you renew your mercies on our lives every single day. Help us to see the ways that you want us to serve you. Help us to see the ways that you want us to impact this community here, to be different, to be a light in this place. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love how Arthur said that God was writing Abraham's redemption story. And that God is writing our redemption story as well. It starts with your own redemption, right? When we surrender our lives to God and we say, have your way with me. Wherever you lead me, whatever the destination, I'll go. And then God uses our own redemption story to write the redemption story of people around us. What a tremendous blessing that is. So what is holding you back today? from God writing your own redemption story or using you to write a redemption story that's going to bless and further God's kingdom. As we worship, I want you to take a moment and consider, are you feeling stuck? Is it time to take action in some area of your life? Are you feeling weary or discouraged and you need God to give you strength and endurance for the journey ahead? Or is your vision short term? Do you need God to remind you of the hope to which he has called you, the purposes of uh, his kingdom, and the destiny that awaits us in our eternal future with God? As we respond to the message that we've just heard, as we continue to worship in just a moment, I invite you to utilize the prayer rail here. You can come and pray for your own life with God. You can pray for our church as we go through a season of transition. And you can pray that God will use us to impact our community in beautiful and redemptive ways. Would you join me in standing now as we worship God together? Through the darkness, your loving 
kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my As we close today and close out our series on Abraham, we have talked so much about putting our trust in God, in whom our hope lies. So as we leave today, I want to leave you with Proverbs chapter 3, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight.
Go in peace, friends. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you cry. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm. Yeah.